Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aircraft carriers are marvels of military power and technology. When we talk about aircraft carriers, we often refer to those of the U.S. Navy. But there are various nations with aircraft carriers. Today, we tour Italy's weirdly designed aircraft carriers at sea. Although the world's first aircraft carrier was the HMS Hermes, Italy did not have its first aircraft carrier until the ITS Cavour entered service in 2009. Cavour was designed to be three types of ships in one. It was designed to be an aircraft carrier, a helicopter carrier, and a roll-on, roll-off ship. Since Italians pride themselves on great cuisine, culinary specialists aboard the ITS Cavour are among the best Italy can train. But the Cavour was designed to fight. And its main strike element is the 10 or more AV-8B Harrier II STOVL aircraft that it carries until their F-35B replacement. These multi-role fighters are moved from the hangar deck to the flight deck using two massive aircraft lifts. Aircraft take off at their own power, utilizing the angled ski ramp at the end of the flight deck. Armed with the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles and AIM-9 Sidewinders, the Harrier IIs that operate from the Cavour are very competitive and have been successfully deployed on various NATO operations. Everything changed drastically for the Cavour when it was certified to carry and operate the fifth generation F-35B Lightning II stealth multi-role fighter. The Cavour is certified as of April 2021 to carry 10 F-35Bs inside its hangar and six more on deck for a total of 16. Not only are these aircraft better than the Harrier in almost every area, but they are also stealth aircraft, carrying their missiles and joint direct attack munitions inside weapon bays in their fuselage. Once the Lightning IIs became available, the profile of the Cavour was changed to that of an aircraft carrier with limited to more significant air power. Cross-deck operations involve moving and using aircraft from one naval ship to another, improving their ability to work together and communicate. For example, Marine Fighter Attack Squadrons of the Royal Air Force and the Italian Air Force and Navy work together on missions inside the Mediterranean. On this occasion, the ships in question were HMS Queen Elizabeth and ITS Cavour. By letting planes land, refuel, or take off from Allied ships, this practice increases tactical flexibility and makes Allies stronger.
Cross-deck operations help navies prepare for joint missions, share operational techniques, and show unity. Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carriers is led by HMS Queen Elizabeth, which is also the Royal Navy's fleet flagship. She was named after the first HMS Queen Elizabeth, a super dreadnought from World War I, which was named after Queen Elizabeth I. With a length of 932 feet and a displacement of over 70,000 tons, the Queen Elizabeth is one of the largest aircraft carriers in the world, second only to U.S. Navy carriers. Unlike U.S. Navy carriers, the HMS Queen Elizabeth has no steam catapult system, but uses a ski ramp for aircraft launches. On the flight deck of the Queen Elizabeth, the aircraft are controlled from the aft island, which acts as the air traffic control tower or pre-fly. Aircraft are controlled by flight deck control personnel using a combination of hand signals and radio communications. These personnel coordinate landings and launches in conjunction with the aft island. When an F-35B is ready for takeoff, the pilot is given the takeoff signal and uses their own power to increase speed and take off from the flight deck using the ski ramp. After missions, the aircraft lands vertically or with slight forward momentum. This is called the shipborne rolling vertical landing technique. In the U.S. Navy, there are two types of aircraft carriers. Older Nimitz class carriers are still among the most powerful in the world, but the new Gerald R. Ford class is set to be the undisputed king of the seas. Both classes displace at least 100,000 tons. The Nimitz class carries 90 aircraft, while the Gerald R. Ford class has scaled down to just over 75 aircraft. These super carriers are nuclear powered and can remain at sea for years if they are regularly resupplied. There are 10 active Nimitz-class carriers and one Gerald R. Ford class serving around the globe. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers utilize a unique arrested landing and catapult takeoff mechanism called CATOBAR. This system utilizes steam to launch aircraft from the carriers, utilizing four steam catapults. On the Gerald R. Ford class, steam is being replaced by emuls. Emuls utilizes electromagnetism in the same way as railguns, but with a much lower and controlled power output. Both classes utilize arresting wires to capture landing aircraft, although the system on the Gerald R. Ford is more advanced, with three instead of four arresting wires.
When the carriers of the world are compared, the only one that comes close to those of the U.S. Navy is the French F.S. Charles de Gaulle. This carrier also uses the cattle bar system. Charles de Gaulle displaces less than half the water than Nimitz-class carriers and has a length of 860 feet compared to the 1,092 feet of the Nimitz-class. Charles de Gaulle also carries fewer aircraft than the Nimitz-class, most notably the Rafale M being their main fighter aircraft. With their cattle bar systems, nuclear power, and other similarities, the U.S. and France have the most unique carriers in the world. Because of their closeness in terms of design, French Rafale M fighters regularly conduct training missions from U.S. Navy vessels. Since six NATO countries operate aircraft carriers, their combined power is formidable. The Charles de Gaulle, the USS Harry S. Truman, and the ITS Cavour together can make up a powerful naval force. These carriers provide strong maritime security by allowing troops and equipment to be sent to different areas quickly. As a group in tri-carrier operations, they show how multinational cooperation can work by completing tasks together, preventing threats, and protecting strategic interests. This helps keep the peace and maintain stability in tough geopolitical situations. During multi-carrier operations, French Rafale fighter jets regularly perform drills, such as touch-and-go landings, full-stop landings, and takeoffs from carriers like the USS George H. W. Bush a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. The drills made it easier for the French and U.S. naval forces to work together, showing that they could effectively integrate their operations. Exercise Chesapeake was an integration exercise. It was the first time 350 airmen from the French Embarked Air Group and the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle worked with the U.S. Navy in the United States. The deployment took place in honor of the historical battle. This operation was named Chesapeake, and its goal was to ensure that French pilots on U.S. carriers had the latest landing skills. French pilots did carrier landings and takeoffs as part of active integration into U.S. naval activities. This helped them improve their skills and make sure they could work with Allied naval forces. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.